And a very good morning to you. It's uh, Friday the 17th of... 17th? That's Friday the... <laughs> it's all gone wrong this morning, hasn't it? Here we are, ten minutes late. Sorry about that. I have no idea. I had no idea nothing was happening. I really didn't. It just suddenly went off for some strange reason. It might have been something to do with the music. I don't think they like you playing music. Um... Uh, before the show, depending on what the music is. And I did get this message telling me if I was to continue playing this music, we would be cut off. How awful, dear. Cut off in the prime. Never mind. Uh, it seems to be working now. So there we are. Good morning to you, boys and girls. I'm never quite sure um, at the beginning of the show, because I have the, my, my lists. I have my lists of things to talk about, as well as a few bits from newspapers and some stuff on my screen as well um i've got to like i have various newspapers on tabs in front of the computer in front of me so if i get if i sort of dry up do you know what I mean? oh god what am i going to talk about now oh no then i just quickly look in a newspaper i, I can usually look at a um a, a title you know a a headline i can turn that into three hours <laughs> i really can you know do you want me to? I could spend the entire show today talking about the inside of a pink. Sorry, John. No, not the inside of one of those, dear. The inside of a. Sorry, Terry. Te please, uh, please, no rudeness today. We don't want rudeness. Not at ten forty in the morning. By the way, if you're uh, watching this morning. And it's coming up to a quarter to 11 on Friday, the 19th of July, 2013, UK time. Then you are with us live and you will be able to join in with us live a little bit later on when uh, I open the phone numbers. Yeah, I'm never quite sure what I've told you last week and what I tell what and sh did I, t I mean, did I tell you about the asthma thing? Did I tell you about the asthma um, uh, uh, review thing that I had the other week? Do you remember that? Did I tell you? Anyway, just to quickly, just in case I didn't. Because I don't like to miss anything, you know. I don't want you to miss out, like, a, a couple of pages ripped out from a book or something like that. Just to let you know, all is well. My asthma thing, I've got my, um, my grey... Just a minute. Where is it now? My grey asthma... <laughs> oh, dear. <coughs> oh, hang on, let me just... <coughs> I've got to blow my nose. <coughs> oh, my God. Tissue's a bit sticky. What's on that? <laughs> um, oh, what is? Oh, dreadful. Um, I've got my. <laughs> stop it. My grey asthma th thing here. <laughs> I'm in one of those moods today. Can you tell? I'm in quite a good mood today. And uh, you blow. You ha you have one of these in the doctors as well. And they say blow in that, please. You go. And I usually get between five hundred and five fifty. So here you go. If it's below that today. I could be on my way out. You know, the next few minutes could be crucial. Mind you, Nelson Mandela's doing all right, isn't he? Apparently he's improved. He's a good old booty, isn't he, eh? He just goes on and on. 95 years old. Do you think you'll get to 95? Eh? Do you? I wonder if I will. If I do, I promise to still be doing these shows, boys and girls. <laughs> Oh, that's pissed you off, isn't it? Yeah, look, this. hang on a minute. Here we go. You ready? I'm just going to blow into it now. <sighs> Whoa! On the, uh, on the higher end, 550 today on the asthma thing. You're supposed to do it three times, aren't you? One minute. Second attempt. <sighs> oh, 525 that time. Okay, not too bad. Last one. And now 520. It seems to be getting worse as I go on. <laughs> so there we are. So the asthma's all right. Also, they told me that my weight has not changed for three years. No change in the weight at all for the last three years. So um, I'm quite pleased about that as well. Hang on a minute. What have I got to do that? Someone wants to be added. There we are added. Good morning, Merlin. I think you're with us. Your call is important to us and you will be connected to a customer services representative as soon as one becomes available. Please hold the line. 
Mind you, if you ring me now, very unlikely I'll answer. I, I no longer answer blocked phone calls, withheld numbers, and numbers I do not recognise. No companies can ring me trying to sell me PPI or a new carpet or new windows or a concern that I might have had an accident somewhere. No one rings me anymore. They can't get through. Ha ha! And there's one particular number. It rings three times a day. I never answer the phone. Ha ha! And the old dentist that I left, he can't get through either. Because they used to ring all the time as well. And oh, and they, they badger you, don't they? Dentists. Anyway, so that's that bit. Um, if you're a, a regular uh, viewer or listener, you will know I've been on a drugs trial. And uh, I went on, because I have a little thing that I go to a specialist doctor about, and he looks after me there. And I've been on this drugs trial, and just to let you know, it has finished. I couldn't believe it myself. You know, I've been going like every six weeks or so, um, on average. It starts off every two weeks, and you go every four weeks, and then month, and then like three months. And that all seems to have worked very well. You don't, we don't get any results or anything like that, because they have to collect all the results from all the other people that are doing the drugs trial. You see, so that worked quite well, um, except that uh, I think what was it now? My, my kidney, fu- apparently, my kidney function, my kidney is bit working a little bit hard. My kidneys, I haven't had one removed, not yet. Anyway, oh my god, touch wood. Shouldn't say something like that. Hang on, I've got a wooden. Sc- Have you seen a wooden screwdriver before? Look, a, a wooden screwdriver. That is so old, unbelievable. I think that come out of my dad's toolkit. I'm sure I stole that from him at some point. Awful. I'm very naughty. Yes, touch wood. I still have both my kidneys, but apparently they're working a little bit harder than they should do. So um, my special doctor is changing me onto another pill. I've got to go back in a couple of weeks because they take a load of blood. And, oh, endless test tubes of blood. There must, there must be about 10 test tubes full of my blood whisking around the country as we speak today, being tested and looked at for all sorts of things in my drugs trial. So I'm quite pleased about that. That has all finished, but I think they're going to put... Um, uh, change one of the tablets over. Uh, but one of the things they're always very impressed with is my heart. There I was laying on one of those beds and I had my, 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 full of wires. And they put all these wires on you. Little, first they put these sticky things on. Little, and, and go stick, 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 stick all over. And then there's all these wires attached to a machine. He says, right, don't, don't move for a minute. And, you know, and I find that difficult, not moving. I certainly find it very difficult not talking to, you know. I had to keep my mouth shut for about 20 seconds. It was practically impossible. So they got a bit of gaffer tape and just... He done his... And they do two lots of this ECG machine or whatever it is, or EGC, whatever it is. And that was all very good. And my pulse rate, get this. Are, are you a gym person? Do you ever go to the gym or anything like that? Well, let me tell you, if I tell you my pulse rate after I've just done something on the internet, one moment. Uh, oh, yeah, I've just got to put a little thing on Facebook because otherwise no one's going to find it, aren't they? There we are, because we changed the link at the last minute, didn't we? What do I do? Do I do that like that? I think that's right. Just about. That's about right. Yes, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So my blood pressure is is, is outstanding. My heart, my pulse is... Da, 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 49. Yes, you heard me right. 49. Now, if you're any sort of athlete or anything like that, because you can look that up. If you type into Google, type in pulse rate 49, you'll find all these things come up. And that's really good. You are considered an athlete if you are like 20 years old and you get a pulse rate of like between 45 and 50, I think it is. Something like that. Now, at my age, 50, um, 5 over 50, uh, at my age, which will not be mentioned by any of you. Remember that, gang? It's our little secret. Someone else said that to me once. Never mind. Uh, it's our little secret. My age is 50. Okay, don't tell anyone that. It is a secret. 50. 50. At my age, 
I think uh, if you get a pulse rate of something like 65, it's considered athletic. So I'm very pleased with myself. And that's, of course, all due to all the uh, cycling and swimming I do. You must do some exercise, boys and girls. Come on, when is the last time you went out for a good walk or something like that? It's very important, especially in these days of additives, because I believe, I believe in every little rainbow flies. I be anyway, oh no, don't don't cut me off YouTube because I, I did use I did sing music then. Did you hear that? They're not keen on you doing music if it's not your own. And that was someone else's song. Maybe I should have a song written for me. Can you write could you write a song for me? Which I could perhaps play on the piano. Maybe I could hire the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra like Barry Manilow does and sing my songs there. Could I do something like that? I don't know. Now what was I saying? Someone remind me what I was talking about, because I've just lost the plot now. Let's just do a couple of messages here. Uh, good morning to Millie. He says, to quote Simple Minds, she says, don't you forget about me. How can I forget about you, Millie? You're there, flashing up on my screen, darling. Thank you. Good morning to Merlin, who's with us as well, in Lyme Regis. Doesn't that sound nice? Lyme Regis. That sounds ever so nice. Lyme Regis, Merlin. I bet it's not, though. I bet it's a dump. Is it a bit of a dump? <laughs> We've no idea what Lyme Regis is like. It sounds like one of those places like that's at the seaside or something like that. Is it? Are you at the seaside? Merlin says his pulse was also about 49 after running the London Marathon. Did you really? See, I had to stop the running, Merlin, because I've got bad, I've got bad feet. I've got trouble with my feet. Something planktositis or something like that I've got. And I've got to go back down the special hospital today. Um, uh, and it's at last, I've got a bloody appointment, dear. I've got to go down the hospital today. Now, I've actually got three appointments. What's happened, I went to my normal doctor because I got fed up waiting at the other one. Uh, because a couple of weeks ago, you may remember, I had an appointment. I went there and they'd cancelled all the appointments and not told me. And it's not exactly an easy journey. It takes me an hour to drive to this hospital. The only other problem is coming home. Because they only do this in the little clinic that I go to, in this special, in this special place, uh, for three hours on a Friday. And I've got a three o'clock appointment. It should be OK getting there. Coming home would be a different matter altogether. Because you've got to go around the blooming M25, do you? Absolute nightmare. It could be a nightmare getting back here this afternoon. But, you know, all for the well and good. I've also got an appointment at my local, for my local doctor there. So I thought, well, I've got those two appointments there. The local doctor one isn't for another couple of weeks. So I might as well, I'll go down there and see what it's like coming back. And if it's too bad, then I'll just stop those ones and go over there. So I've kept them both, I'm keeping them both. I think they both want my custom. They really do. Can you imagine what I'm like at a doctor's talking all the time? Yes. Uh, Merlin says, Lyme Regis is the retirement block of the southeast. Is it really? I bet you get on well there, though, don't you? Because you're looking a bit old now, to be honest, Merlin. Oh, he's getting a bit old. You know, they come out with all these uh, 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 pretend ages and things like that, don't they? That they're young and what have you. I think Merlin's quite old, to be honest. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think possibly John, I don't know if John's with us this morning. He's quite, how old are you, John? Christ. <laughs> None of us are getting any younger, are we? So that's that. That's the feet thing today. What was I, I can't remember what I was talking about. Oh, yes. When you get, and certainly when you get to a certain age, you must do something. There's too many people sitting there watching a blooming television all day and not doing anything. And you are, you know, you will have a heart attack. I'm sorry. You will have a heart Oh, Oh, my God. I've, just a minute. I forgot my emails here. I just saw one of our regulars pop up there on the Skype and remembered that his e I wasn't going to do the emails for a minute. Have I, got, have I printed his off? Hang on a minute. It's young James. Hello, James. Who's with us live today. Good morning, James. James Bates. Over in uh, sort of Lewisham, Ray, South East London. Good morning, James. Yes, I've, I've just remembered your emails there. Um, so, you know, even if it's just, even if you don't do anything at all, like, uh, 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 you don't have to go running or swimming or cycling. That's what I was saying, Merlin. Yes, I had to stop the um, uh, 
uh, the running because of my bad feet. Hopefully, um, from today, they'll start getting better, whatever they're going to do to them. But basically, would you like to see my feet? It's foot. Just a minute, because I've got my shorts on today. Uh, foot. Right, so here, along the side there, it is very painful. Sort of, those of you just listening, sort of between the end of the small toe and at the arch. Now, if I push... Where is it now? There it is. If I push that there, right? Very, very painful indeed. Oh dear. Very, very painful indeed. And it's both sides. It's worse. It can go one side or the other side or both at the same time. And you, and you, I'm walking around, you know, like I should have one of those um, frames in front of me sometimes. And other times, doesn't hurt at all. So it'd be very interesting to see what... Um, what they come up with. Uh, my other doctor has already told me it's something like something planktitis or something like that, which is quite a common thing for people who are um, standing in one place for ages and ages. It really is. Oh, John says he's 36. Oh, come on, John. Come on, John. We're all friends on here. You can tell us your true age. <laughs> 36, dear. Pull the other one. Come on, John. I thought you were going to book me for your 60th birthday party at some point. Talking of which, John, I don't know. Talking to people who are over 60, I don't know. Did you ever hear of Norman Scott, a DJ? Did you ever hear of Norman Scott, I wonder? He was big on the scene in London in the 70s, early 80s. I, he walked into somewhere I was working last Friday. I couldn't believe it. Norman Scott. Of course, I didn't really, never really seen him because I wasn't, I, I thought I was playing at being straight at that time. You know, I went through the whole getting married thing and everything. So that, that's what happens, I'm afraid, you know. When there's no one to pull you out of it. Um, I, I got married and everything and I thought, oh, well, you know, I just need to get married and, 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 and then you, then you, then everything will fall into place. It doesn't work like that. Really doesn't work like that at all. Anyway, I don't know if you knew, knew, uh, Norman. Uh, <laughs> John says, watching all your shows has aged me. Why is that then? A lot of people use these shows to just fall asleep. That's what they do some of the times. Um, <laughs> Terry says, put your, put your bloody trotters away. I've just had breakfast. Uh, I, oh, really, Terry? I, I heard that you were in defeat. Is that right? Is that, yeah, like, like, like a little lick of someone's foot? There's some very sick people about me, boys and girls. And Terry and Leeds is one of them. If you ever go up to Leeds and you bump into someone called Terry, hold on to your feet. OK, because he will make a, <laughs> he dive bombs like a magpie. He, <laughs> he dive bombs. He dive bombs your feet. He really does. <laughs> um, John says he's never ho heard of Norman Scott. I was only a baby then. Oh, do us all a favour, John. What are you saying? <laughs> you were there when Norman Scott started, weren't you? Don't lie to me. Yes. Thank you very much. So that's, uh, that's my um, uh, feet news, my kidney news, my drugs trial news. Dentist soon. Just another couple of weeks away from my dentist, oh, the new dentist, which I'm rather, rather frightened about. Did I tell you the other one rang up again the other day? And bear in mind, I haven't been for 18 months. They absolutely badger you. And I told them, oh, I'd just taken over this phone number. And I keep getting, getting, getting phone calls for this so-called Mr. Reard. And please don't ring again. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. We'll take you off the list. So that's it. I shouldn't hear from them anymore. Bastards. I hate being badgered. Now, we've got a, a young lady who, who uh, is waiting for a little phone call. She wants to chat with us today. Um, just a second. Merl Merlin's only 24. Is that all you are, Merlin? Oh, bless him. Oh, I mean, I'd go out with you, Merlin, to be honest. I really would. I think you're very good looking, dear. Half my age, but that doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter to me anyway. Oh. Thing is, Merlin, you know, I have to say, because you're one, are you one of the people that watch the show? Or are you just listening? I'm not quite sure. Um, but you know, with, with the with the camera I use, it's 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 not a high definition one, so my lines are kind of blurred out. If you meet me, and I'm, I look more like um, uh, Alan Sugar on The Apprentice, 
<laughs> but, you know, I mean, I'm waiting for a date. We'll have to have a daytime date because I work every night, as you know, if that's all right with you. <laughs> Poor thing. 24 years old and they think, you know, they make me laugh, these people. They're like, forget to 25 years old and they think they're past it, don't they? Never mind. OK, let's um, let's try and call her Millie because she wants a little bit of a chat today. Uh, John says, anyone with a foot fetish shall be shot. Oh, no, we can't be going short, shooting Terry. We can't be shooting Terry, you know, if he's got this little little thing that he's got with his feet, you know. I mean, I'm not I'm not too bothered about it, really. Just one of those things, isn't it? You know. Anyway, let's go to the... Um... Oh, dear, this, this thing's right in my ear. Oh. Let's go to the phones and talk to uh, Millie. Good morning, Millie. Good morning, darling. How are you? Oh, it's young Millie. I'm very well, thank you. You're looking rather wonderful in your photograph. Thank you very much. What's the news? Well, um, first of all and foremost, I need to say a very happy birthday to my late father. Oh, yes. Don Turk. He would have been 78 today. Okay. Oh, where's my happy birthday tune? Oh, I haven't got it. I haven't got that lined up today. Oh, you must tell us in advance next time. I will. Yeah. So, I, did, I, so I your, your, your dad's birthday is the day after my dad's? Yes. Yeah, my dad died in 96, so what would he be? And he was 70, so 96, 06, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So my dad would be 87? He would have been 87, I think, my dad. Mm-hmm. Okay, where are you, Millie? Tell us where you are, darling. I am in Minnesota, USA. Millie, motorised Millie in Minnesota. Watch that is out. Correct. Millie's on her wheelchair. She will run over you if you don't get out of the way. <laughs> yep, and I have done so in the past. I know. I remember. Remember you told us about the restaurant where people. Oh wouldn't... <laughs> yeah, and and you always get a big laugh out of that story. Someone wouldn't get out of her way in the restaurant, so she pushed her button and ran over his foot. <laughs> after. after... After saying excuse me three times and him not moving. <coughs> I know. Shocking. Yeah, I know. Would you like to sing happy birthday to your dad who's in heaven? Sure. Go on. Um, let's see. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, it is very rare that I will ask for anything for myself. Yes. As I've alluded to, as I alluded to the last time that I called in, I am usually the one to offer support to others. Of course, always. But I am about to make a very rare exception. And I would like to ask you and those who are watching and listening who are so inclined to keep me in your thoughts and prayers because I'm not going through what I would call a personal crisis, but I am about to do something very difficult that will require me to dredge up some very painful and difficult things from my past in order to make sure that those involved or the person involved knows that I have not forgotten yes. what has happened. And it will hopefully facilitate others that were um, a victim of this person to come forward and they will be required, hopefully, to, in some small way, pay the piper, so to speak. And it's, I'm not going in there with any expect, any preconceived expectations, but it is going to be very difficult for me to do. And I can't go into it on the show, Chris, per your request, but I will go into more detail with you privately later so that you have a little bit more of an idea what's going on. Right, okay. So please, everybody, just keep me in your thoughts and prayers um, as I prepare to do this. Um, my main uh, 
goal in doing what I'm about to do. Hopefully I can save one person. Hopefully I, if I can save even one person by doing what I'm going to do, then it will have been worth it. Well, we must wish you all good luck with that, Millie. Thank you very much. I, I very much appreciate that. I, I can use all the emotional support I can get right now. Good. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, it's just something that I, you know, that I need to do. Well, it's... then you go ahead and do it, my darling. Yeah, yeah. And, and the best of luck with that. Yeah, thanks. So, otherwise, I'm fine. I just have returned back from the cottage uh, last week. And I'm going to go back in two weeks. Yeah. And um, my my mom is on an Alaska cruise. Actually, she's leaving later today. Alaska? Oh, no. That'd be far too cold. for. I, I'm not going to go on any more of these cold holidays. New York was enough for me, thank you very much. My God, <laughs> it's the coldest place on Earth in February. No more cold holidays. Well, she's mad, she is. Alaska? All that snow, dear? Alaska, it's a, it's a cruise, an Alaskan cruise. Yeah. I, um, you know, my mom's friends have been very good over the last year and, you know, and indeed since my dad has passed away mm -hmm. um, in making sure that she has things to do and places to go so that she doesn't have a lot of time to think. Yes. And this was one of the this was one of those and I believe one of those instances. So tell me, in Alaska, is it is it like you just? Uh, I mean, is there? It's, it's a big place. Is there somewhere specifically it's, that you go, and what do you go to do? Um, I have no idea what my mom's itinerary is. Yeah. But um, I get the impression that it's going to be kind of a a sort of a cruise all around, you know, different parts of the state yes. of Alaska. Um, this are there, was... are, presumably they have cities there, do they? Or is it just like, to me, you know, I'm thinking Alaska is just one big place with ice and icebergs and polar bears, and that's about it. Uh, no, actually, it's not like that. Now, mind you, I've not been there myself. Right. But um, there are... The biggest city um, is Fairbanks, Alaska. That's kind of... Fairbanks, you, know, the, you say, is it? I'm going to have a quick yeah, look Fair, at that. Yeah, Fairbanks, go on. Fairbanks, Alaska is yeah. kind of the big city. And then, as, Chris, as you say, Chris, it is a big state, and there are outlying uh, villages that are a bit more cut off. Yes. Um, Let's have a look at images. Images. Oh, yes, it's a big city, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is it always cold? Oh, they, oh, they had the um, oh, what are those lights in the sky called? No, northern lights. Northern yeah. light. Oh, they oh, have the yeah, northern it's... lights there. There's some pictures of that. Anyone who's near a computer, well, most of you, that is, isn't it? Uh, type in Fairbanks, Alaska, on Google, and then images, and you'll see some pictures of the the most beautiful um, uh, uh, northern lights and all that. Is it always cold there, though? I, I just oh, and there's a picture of the midnight sun. That's fantastic. Yeah, because in the winter they don't. It doesn't get. It doesn't get dark yes. during the winter time in Alaska. It's they call it the land of the midnight sun, and right. that's and that is why. And wh what month would that be in then? Um, we're talking um, winter time, December, January, February. Okay. Uh, the winters are indeed very cold, as you say. Chris. Yes. And so cold and there are so many outlying villages that yes. there are boats. Let's see. I, they're icebreakers. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So that the boats can get through. Right. And they and they have to they have to um, bring in oil and and stuff like that for the for the villages to keep, you know, to keep everybody's. Yes to keep everybody warm and their power going and everything else. I mean, we're luckier in a lot of ways than they are because, right. you know, we're in the lower 48 and we can get what we need fairly quickly. Yeah, yeah. They, however, cannot. They have to order stuff and, and, and what have you, do they? Yeah, Let's right. Just, um... and, and sometimes because Northern. it is more cut off, 
than the rest of us. Right. Um, they don't get mail for for like they only get mail like once every two weeks or something like that. Okay. I mean, there's a there's a beautiful picture of the Northern Lights. There's always are they always green? The Northern Lights. They always seem to be green, or do they yeah. have other colors as well? They have other colors as well, but it's it also beautiful. depends on how clear the sky is. Yes, yes. Absolutely It'll... stunning pictures of uh, of the Northern Lights on there. Oh, well, I'm sure she'll have a nice time. But is it is it like, is it summer there now or is it winter? Because, you know, obviously it's, not. Yeah, go on. It's, it's, summer, it's summer now, but right. they're, what, what they would be doing right now is trying to stock up on things as much as possible before yes. the winter the winter comes slamming in again. Right. Uh, d because d once... And how how hot will it be there now? Will it will it be like in the 70s or doesn't it get... Uh, I just assume it never gets never gets that hot there. Um, it, it can get up into the 70s, you know, when the spring thaw comes. Right. But then um, as time goes on, um, it can get... It can get cold. It's not... It's not a place that I would enjoy going no, to. No, no, no. I don't think I would. It's, I mean, it's not a it's not a place that I would enjoy. Yeah. Going to, but um, what what it is is my mother has has this group of friends that she has had for like donkeys years. Yeah. And each and each year they as a group get together and pitch in and do like one big trip like one year they went to new york yes one year they went to cabo san lucas mexico um etc etc is it a great holiday destination for the for the americans alaska it, or is it, it, it or, or, or is it considered unusual to want to go there it's not so unusual right. if you're a nature buff because alaska has some penguins of the, some of some of the most unspoiled wilderness you will ever see yeah mountains to hike um there are wild wildlife reserves penguins is there penguins i want to see penguins there yes, buffins there, yes there are penguins oh boy there are penguins <laughs> I one do of know. my do you... least favorite birds <laughs> <laughs> John's just looking at some pictures and he says Fairbanks looks amazing. He yeah. really does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she'll be on a cruise now for about the next week or so and then she'll be back in Minnesota on the 29th and then on the 30th, the 31st, I'm going to be going back to the cottage for another week. So That's a cottage yeah. you and your mum own, is it? Where is that? Um, me and me, my mom and my sister. Where is that again? Pelican Rapids, Minnesota. That sounds nice as well. Is there a lot of water around there? Rapids water, yeah. Uh not. But I don't know why they call it Pelican Rapids. But what we have, our cottage is on Pelican Lake. Yes. And it's supposed. It supposedly is called Pelican Lake because it's shaped like a pelican. Although you can't. Prove that by me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, our cottage is situated on a beach. Yes. And my um, my mom grew grew up there. She would spend all of her summers. Um, she is one of five girls. I mean, her, my grandfather, God rest his soul, whom I never had the chance to know, but know through stories yeah. and pictures. He was called the Dean of Women because he was hope, hopelessly outnumbered. I mean, five daughters plus his wife. Yeah. No testosterone whatsoever. <laughs> and um, Barnesville, where my mother grew up, um, was about, ooh, golly, 45 minutes from Pelican Rapids. And they would spend their years at, you know, at, the, at my mom's childhood home. And then in the summer they would all pack up, and my, and he had built a cottage um, himself from the ground up, and they would spend their summers there. Yeah. And then as as each of the girls, um, particularly my auntie Beverly, 
grew up and got married. She and her husband... Not not Beverly, not Beverly Crusher from Star Trek, is it? No, no, oh. no, no, no. Her name was uh, Beverly Fish. Don't... Her name is Beverly Fish, and don't you dare start making fun of her last name. What, Beverly <laughs> Fishing, does she? No, she didn't fish. <laughs> I can't think of anything more boring, to be honest. You see all I these think... old kids along the old river, don't they, with their rods, and they sit out there for hours, and it's raining, and it's cold. Oh, you What's know what? What's all that about? To catch a fish that half the time they have to chuck back in the water again. I mean, what on earth is all that about fishing? Oh, my I don't get oh it. Oh, my gosh. Don't um... get it. You just, you just, you just reminded me. Well, it's not so bad. Say, say you was on a holiday or somewhere. You know, maybe in the states, a a, a lovely place like I don't know Niagara Falls, where you got something to look at. You know, I can almost understand you going fishing there. But some of these blokes, they go to a lake, right? And nothing changes on this lake, and they sit round this lake that they've been going to for years and years, and just sit there. That was my dad. I haven't got the patience to do that. I'm sorry. No patience at all to do that. <laughs> you just reminded me of a story. Oh my goodness. My oh my dad my dad was you know, he loved hunting, he loved he loved fishing. Uh and I remember one year when I was eleven, he decided he got it in his head, he was a man on a mission, he was gonna take me fishing. Yeah. <sighs> we sat out there for four hours. And I didn't get nothing except a sunburn that went all the way from the top of my left arm all the way up to my shoulders. Did you have some aloe vera? No, we had nothing like that. So when, when I was in I... Ba- when I was in Barbados, I was laying on the beach, and this bloke came up to me. He says, "Aloe vera, aloe vera." I said, "Yes, hello, and my name's not Vera." Al- <laughs> <laughs> Trust you to say something like that, Chris. I mean, good grief. But I, when we when we pulled in, um, when we finally got to shore, I said, Dad, I am never, ever, ever going fishing again. You Did sound you? like Taylor Swift there. You sound yeah. like, I am never, never getting back together. Poor old Harry Styles, dear. Carry on, dear. But I told him, I said, I'm never going fishing with you again. Find another partner. And I kept that promise. <laughs> and he always regretted it because he said it, he made the mistake of keeping me on, you know, keeping me on the lake too long. Yes, yes. And it, and it, and it turned me off of fishing. Oh, you poor old soul. You got burnt, didn't you? You cover, oh. cover up. Have you got, I can't remember, you've got light hair, have you? Um, got... I actually am a brunette. Well... When I was little, my hair was light brown, but right. as I got older, it darkened to brunette. Yes. And then, oh my gosh, I, God bless my mother and her genes, I, I became prematurely gray at the age of 18. What did she have, Wrangler or Levi? Ha, 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 ha. Very funny. <laughs> I told you I was in a funny mood today, Millie. Can uh, I just give yeah, out? you weren't kidding. My goodness. Who put a who put a quarter in you today? Well, I don't know. I must give out the email address, boys and girls. Uh, Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Those of you watching a recording of this show or listening to a recording, you can always join in on email. We have some emails this week, which I shall read out very shortly. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk is the email address. Carry on, Millie, darling. Yep. Um, I became prematurely gray at the age of 18, believe it or not. And I said, "Uh uh-uh, this is not going to work. So now now I dye my hair black. Oh, okay. You you dyed it, did you? Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Right, fair enough. I dyed my hair once, blonde, many, many years ago. I think it was 20 at the time. Oh, my gosh. I've got a photo somewhere. I don't know where it is. Um, And I do look an idiot because I didn't dye my eyebrows. So they were still black. (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness. And then and then I had great big hoops, hooped earrings like a gypsy. I decided to wear those for a while. Oh no, you oh, It's all these different it's all these different fashions, isn't it, you know. Was your was your mother shocked? Yes, when, she was. <laughs> oh my gosh, did she go mad? I can just no. see No, she I, never ever went mad at me for anything, not really. I can no. just I can just see the look on Miss Bridget's face no. when you must have gone in the house with all that 
when in that get up. No, oh it, my god. I tell you what, it didn't seem to matter what I did, um, uh, uh, what I did wrong or whatever. I, I was never really um, uh, uh, hated or anything like that. Unlike some of the other children, you know, who have these, uh, you hear these dreadful stories um, yes. uh, with some children and how, or, 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 who are now perhaps my age and they tell you about the story of their childhood. And I, I find it difficult to understand because I didn't have that childhood. Same as yourself. You had a father who loved you and everything didn't you i did but my childhood was very difficult yes in, in a lot of ways mm -hmm. um and you know i've never shared it here as per your request because you know a long time ago chris had told me uh that what had happened to me was a little bit too heavy duty that's right, to share yes. on the show yeah we don't do that on here well, Millie, I must get through these emails, my darling. It's 20 past 11 already, dear. And I'm, I know. I'm, I'm, a bit You're right today. I'm a bit restricted on the time today because I've got to jump in the car and go down the hospital and hopefully get my feet at least starting to be sorted out. I better have a shower. I suppose I better have a shower first as well, had I? So, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> um, what did they say about your feet anyway? I don't I... know. Going down, there to, going down there to find out. Ah, okay. Nice to talk to you, Millie. Good to talk to you, and I will keep you. I will keep you posted on what's going on. Yep, lots of love as always. Bye bye, Millie. Right. Bye bye. Mwah. Millie in sunny Minnesota. There isn't a song about Minnesota, is there? Really, I don't think there is. No. Anyway, uh, don't forget the email address once again, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, thank you very much to Gary, Mr. Owen in sunny Wales. <clears throat> Who was, excuse me a minute, who was um, uh, mentioning that uh, when we do the show live, the link changes every week. You don't get something. Apparently, you can get a regular link, so it's the same every week. You know, because at the moment, you have to look at the Facebook wall and think, oh, what, what's the link today? And then we had a little bit of a problem today, didn't we? We had a, a, a got cut off somehow. I'm not quite sure what happened there, um, but we did get cut off. Uh, apparently, you can have a regular link on there somehow. So I will try and um, sort that out. I didn't put that up there either today, did I? Just a second. Has that worked now? There we are. You've got my um, uh, phone number and Skype up there as well now. Sorry, I've, I keep forgetting to do things today. I don't know why. I'm losing my mind. Apparently, you can get a, 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 a permanent link, which is like YouTube.com, something like users, Chris Reed in UK, or something like that, and then it would be the same every week. That would be a lot easier uh, for people to watch, and you wouldn't have to keep looking on the Facebook wall if you don't didn't want to. All right? If you're not on my Facebook, you're welcome to join that. My Facebook username is Chris Reed in UK. All right? So Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reed in UK. I've got Twitter as well. To be honest, don't use it much. In fact, I haven't even bothered putting a thing on there. I, I, I just ne have never got on with Twitter. I've been saying that now for three or four years, and I still don't get it. I just don't understand Twitter at all, but I have got that as well. Same you, uh, same username is Chris Reardon UK. Now, um, I think Terry, I'm not sure Terry, I think Terry wanted to have a little chat with us, so I'll come to you in a second, Terry, if you're ready. Can you just t send me a little message and I'll come to you on the phone? Uh, meanwhile, <clears throat> let's say hello to James. Hello, James, who's also with us live this morning and sends in an email. Hi, Chris, because we were talking about school dinners last week. And I said, we have the, I had the best school dinners ever uh, at my school, the London Oratory in Fulham. The, the school dinners were really nice there. Not so nice in the primary school where I went to, which was the Sacred Heart in Roehampton. And uh, James says, hi, Chris, you were lucky if you got good school dinners. Mine were really awful and badly cooked. Well, they, oh, that's a shame, isn't it? Because we do like school dinners. I used to spend my entire morning looking forward to school dinners. I think some, some, some now they have, don't people have breakfast? We never used to have breakfast in school. That's, that's a sort of relatively new thing to me having breakfast in school. Yeah, I kind of wonder why. I suppose it's because um, parents are too busy to do anything, aren't they? You know, everyone's sort of rushing around for work. Whereas at my house, Dad would leave for work around about half past seven in the morning. 
And uh, sometimes I would see him, sometimes I wouldn't if he'd gone a bit earlier. And uh, mum, she had a part-time job, and I don't think she started till about 10 o'clock in the morning at the Digby Stewart College in Roehampton. She was a secretary there. Uh, but always uh, mum mum done breakfast. So I think that's a, quite a new thing, sort of breakfasts in schools. And when I was going to school in the 70s, we, di- we didn't have that. The, the whole morning was spent looking forward to school dinners. So I loved them there. James says, I never remember having fish and chips and things like that until secondary school. And even that wasn't good then. Um, we did have chips in secondary school, but not very often. It was quite unusual to have chips. It was usually the mashed potato. You know, when they, they get that scoop and they click, click. I always wanted one of those as a child. I wanted one of those mashed potato scoops. Not like the ones, you know, the ones you buy in the supermarket now. They're all made out of plastic, aren't they? Huh? I wanted one of those metal ones. She used to scoop it out and she goes, and I found a pin once in my, in my, in my mashed potato air pin. <laughs> God, must have dropped out of Vera's um, Vera's hairnet or something like that. Vera was one of the dinner ladies who used to serve up the dinners. Yes. Um, as for packed lunches, James says, the press say that it's unhealthy. But hasn't this been the case for years now? I remember this being a problem when I was at school, and that's going back a few years now. Um, well, I mean, packed lunches can be unhealthy or they can be healthy, can't they? You know, it, it just depends what you put in them, really. If you're going to put in crisps and bars of chocolate and things like that, very unhealthy. Not good for you at all. You were going on about diabetes and being related to our diets. Diabetes isn't always. It can be a hereditary problem. And it was a problem years ago. I think with all the changes now, it wouldn't be a problem. What you mean with drugs? Well... I mean, a lot of the diabetes is, 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 is I'm afraid, self-inflicted. Do you blame someone, though, who's got diabetes because they keep eating sweets and things like that? Can you actually blame them? It's very difficult. It's like a habit, isn't it? Really. Going out and buying loads of sweets and things like that. I find it extremely difficult. Well, like, if I'm in, you know, Waitrose or a, a supermarket or the co-op just down there. And you go in for perhaps a loaf of bread and then you see the Maltesers. I find it incredibly difficult not to pick up a bag of Maltesers. Not, not the small one, I have to say. You, you, know, you know the large one. You really do. And it's impossible, you know. You can't just have a few out of the bag. I was talking to my mate Jason yesterday. Jason lives in London, in uh, Islington, I think it is. And he was saying that he bought, he, he, you know, he's, he's trying to be healthy. So he bought, a, he was went into Marks and Spencer's or somewhere, or Waitrose to buy, to buy a quiche. And they were two for one. Okay, so he's got these two quiches. And he took a moment and he thought, well, I'll have a bit of that for lunch. And he, t- and he took his quiche out of the fridge, cut a slice, put it on the plate, put it back in the fridge and went and sat down. And he had it. So he went back to the fridge and got another slice and then put them back in the fridge and sat down and had another slice. Then he returned to the fridge again. (laughs) This carried on until he'd had the whole quiche. (laughs) It is very difficult. You buy a box of cakes. And when you look at the label, you know, there might be, I don't know, 90 calories, 90, 100, 120 calories in one cake. I've got those, you know, I quite like those fondant fancies. You know, Mr. Kipling's fondant fancies. Quite like those. Little iced cakes with a little nipple of cream in the top. Absolutely delicious. Actually, you know, to have one will cost you, I think it's something about 120 calories, something like that. So you open the box and you take one out. But they're delicious. And then you have another one and another one. And before you know, you've had four, 500 calories. It's, I find it really difficult. Packets of biscuits. Open a packet of biscuits. Can you have just one? Wouldn't be so bad if you just put a couple on a plate. And I tried that. Mum said uh, years ago, why don't you just take a few out of the packet, put them on a plate, put the packet back and take the plate in the room. So I do that. I do that. I take three out, three or four. All right, maybe five. 
I'll take them into the living room, eat them. And then all that happens is that you get off the chair, go back into the cupboard, take another five out, put them... It's just a waste of time, isn't it? You might as well bring the packet in. Very, very difficult. <laughs> That's why I rarely have uh, biscuits. I n almost never have biscuits in the house anymore. Or cakes. I think there's one fondant fancy at the moment in the box. It's the chocolate one. I don't like the chocolate ones, do you? I really don't like those chocolate fondant fancies at all. I like the pink ones... And the yellow ones, but not the chocolate ones. Isn't that strange? It's just a sort of the wrong flavoured chocolate, I think. Or maybe they actually all taste the same. It's just different colouring. Is it our minds that sort of say to us, you know, this is going to be strawberry because it's pink. This is going to taste lemony because it's yellow. I think they're probably all the same flavour. But Maltesers are the worst. Oh, my God. And they've got a special offer at the moment. Large packet for a pound. Very difficult to walk past those. Back to this email. Um, James says, As for you leaving your doors open and you being a safe area, to do that must be really nice now with the things you see out and about, which is not good. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Yes. Um, well, I mean, I don't... don't really leave my doors open. Oh, I see what you say. I remember what I was talking about last week. No, no, I don't... Re Some of the time, sometimes, James, I say things in here and it, it's kind of as jest, you know, it's, it's like a joke type thing. You see what I mean? I don't actually really leave my doors unlocked all the time. I don't really cut my way through wild roses to get to the front door. It's, it's, it's a bit of a joke, James. Do try and get with it, dear. You mentioned someone called Tom. You know, reminded about Tom Harris. I hope he's keeping OK. And he used to do quite good shows. I, I don't know if Tom still does his shows, actually. Um, but I know he, he listens in uh, all the time still, so you'll probably get a little reply from that, all right? Hope Katie, your cat's OK. I could hear her protesting outside the studio the other show last week. Yes, she meows and awful. Her meowing is getting more and more, actually. Poor old Katie. She does meow an awful lot. As for you showing the aircraft at Heathrow Airport, I hope you enjoyed that little film last week. Uh, Boris Johnson has sparked the debate for the airport expansion in London. And there was talk about Heathrow going all together. Yeah, he was saying um, he thinks it might be a good idea to get rid of Heathrow Airport completely and start all over again with this island in the Thames Estuary. I, I, I have to say, I quite like the idea of that. I do like the idea about um, uh, the island in the Thames Estuary where the planes would come in and out. But where's the money from that going to come from? Going to cost a fortune. I did also hear another idea the other day, and that was that they would extend the runways that they have at the moment at Heathrow and split them in half. That seems quite a reasonable answer. Now, I have planes flying over here all the time, although they're not particularly low. I'm not that... I'm close to Heathrow, but not that close. It doesn't really bother me. But, my, I, 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 you know, and that, that does sound a quite idea. But I do like the idea of this, this island in the Thames, a brand new island where your planes would fly in and out, you know. Don't forget the email address, boys and girls. If you've got any comments about this or anything else, uh, do let us know. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk All right? Especially if you're watching the show as a recording, send your email in, I'll read it out next week. If you're with us live, it's like uh, just gone 11.30 on Friday the 19th of July 2013. Then you're very welcome. Welcome. You can join in by Skype if you want. My Skype username is Chris Reardon, all one word, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. There's a phone-in number as well, a local London number, 020 Eight one double three six three five eight oh two oh eight one double three six three five eight. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you were talking about your friend Tom going on pack campaigns. Yes, I've got a young friend who comes to the quiz night, Tom, and uh, he he goes out on all these campaigns. He he believes in something. He does something about it. You know, which which is great. I think in some ways, if it's peaceful, then it's a good thing, as it can bring about good debates and raise awareness to problems. Yes, 
Yes, and I, he does go on peaceful demonstrations, things like uh, against fascism and against that. He's, he's, and he's a, he's a very big uh, Labour supporter as well. Also about the aircrafts and the River Thames has some good views of all the different shops and barges coming into the Thames. Last Saturday was the 150th annual Thames Sailing Barge Race. It was a sight to see and something to watch out for if you're interested. No, I don't know anything about that, actually. But did you go to that, James? I'm sure you had a nice time. All right. Thank you very much for your email, James. Nice to hear from you. Uh, good morning to Craig, who's with us live this morning. Good morning, Craig. Who says, tuning into your show on this lovely and warm Friday morning here in Hinkley, Leicestershire. I've got my air conditioning on. I've got a little air conditioning in here, which is rather marvellous. Hope you're keeping well. Hay Viva has been trouble for me, but I'm on the tablets for this, and they are kicking into my system, and it's not too bad. Um... Well, I don't know about this hay fever thing. It's If I have it, it's certainly not bothering me at the moment. You know, I, I, I don't get it, to be honest. Uh, people have said to me, um, do I suffer from that? I mean, even the doctor, I had some something going on in my mouth last year, little bumps coming up in the back of my mouth. And the doctor said it was hay fever. Well, um, they are telling us at the moment that the pollen levels are very high very very high at the moment and yet it really hasn't bothered me at all no problem whatsoever with the hay fever so don't know I'm not not quite sure about that whether i have it or not um craig says i've managed to contact engelbert humperdinck's son scott dorsey and is sorting out some signed cds for me to raffle off at a charity raffle which we're doing on August 10th at our local park and Castle Mead Radio is doing an outside broadcast in our bandstand located in the park because um, uh, Craig does a, a few little jobs on a hospital radio station, Castle Mead Radio, so, uh, and it, which is, uh, you know, a, a damn good thing to do. Very good. Last week saw me, my mum and dad, plus another family relative, popping down to London on Saturday to the Royal Albert Hall for the Doctor Who, Who Proms Music Concert. Yes, I I meant to. I, I'm, is this been on the television yet? I want. I'm, I'm waiting for this to come on the telly. I did look if it was on that night, and it didn't seem to be. It was very hot in there, but the music was as ever fantastic by Murray Gold and Ben Foster and the BBC National Orchestra of Wales. Monsters were present in the hall. It's funny. I don't remember being there. <laughs> Monsters in the hall came out when certain pieces of music were playing, such as I Am the Doctor and the Dalek themes. Daleks came out on stage, and Cybermen, plus those lovely vampire ladies, and one of the new Ice Warriors broke out of some ice. <clears throat> Peter Davidson, Fifth Doctor, uh, made a surprise on stage, and Carol Ann Ford, First Doctor's Susan, came on stage to introduce a piece of music as well. Matt Smith and Jenna Louise Coleman were there and surprised people on stage too. It wasn't as good as the 2010 Doctor Who Music Proms concert though. Uh, wasn't it? Oh, why is that then? Anyway, take good. Uh, Going to enjoy the sunshine and that's from uh, Craig. So uh, nice to hear from you, Craig. I do hope uh, uh, I get to see the old, uh, 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 what do you call it? Doctor Who concerts. I hope they're going to show it probably on BBC Three or something like that. Uh, James has just Skyped in. He says, uh, Twitter works in a different way to Facebook. Twitter is good for finding out news and for finding out when shows are on, like yours. But I've never seen anything on it for anything else. I, I, I really don't use it. I don't even put the fact that this show's on on there. Maybe I should get a bit more used to doing that sort of thing. Facebook is best for keeping in contact with people. As for school dinners, I hear it's a lot different now. It's very hard with the food on offer too, I must agree. But, um, well, I mean, I, as I say, uh, I, I certainly can't complain. The school dinners when I was at school at the London Oratory in Fulham were absolutely outstanding. And we always looked forward uh, to school dinners. Good morning to Cyber John, who says, I hope I can pop on tomorrow morning. I've just got to get a report done, uh, which will take me. Oh, that was, did you send that yesterday? Ah, there you are. I think uh, I think Cyber John wants to have a chat this morning, so we'll um, let me get my ear things back again. Where they disappear? Let's the we'll see if we can get hold of John. All right, let's. I think he's answered now. Just a second. Good morning, John. Are you there, John? Hello. No, we can't hear you. Are you doing something wrong, John? Hello. 
No, that hasn't worked, does it? Shall we try once more? John's in the Netherlands in Holland, and uh, he sometimes calls in. Let's try that once more. Once more. If not, John, I think you've got something wrong. You'll just have to send me a little message to tell me that it's not working. Uh, Terry in Leeds says he hasn't actually got a foot fetish. I'm not sure, sure about that, Terry, to be honest. Are you sure you haven't got a foot fetish? <laughs> you can share it with us. We're all friends here in the, the happy world. The person you're trying to reach oh. is currently unavailable. Oh, how rude. Please leave a message after oh, the beep. Should we leave a message? Yeah, we'll leave Hello, John. It's Chris Reardon from United Kingdom Talk here. Ring in as you requested, and now you're not there. How rude is that? Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, hang on. Incoming call. Let's try that. Thanks. Oh, there you are. Hello, John. Hi, Chris. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to call you there and I got your answer phone. I've left the message. Yeah. The uh, What happens is, is is if you want to record somebody on Skype, yes. you set it to uh, use your sound options to record through a stereo mixer. It means that nobody can hear what you're saying. Are you recording me? <laughs> no. Well, can't do I that. haven't given permission for that. <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm very well, very well and bouncy this morning. Thank you very much, John. Uh, something went a little bit wrong at the beginning, but uh, but we we got it all together in the end. So quite happy, John. Mm, I, I was watching um, another YouTube channel that yes. said you were alive, but I, there was nothing came on. No, no, it, it, it worked up to a point and then uh, for some reason switched off. But it doesn't matter. You know, it's all sorted now. Might have been something to do with the music because a bit funny. If you play... Um, Mm. copyrighted music and I, I, I thought the stuff I was playing today wasn't copywritten but it might have been so actually if I just go onto the YouTube now they'll be able to so because they are able to tell they do tell you what it was sometimes ah here we are look I can tell you which one it was mm -hmm. oh yes there's there's actually oh it was Grandstand what the, uh, the like the sports theme yes <laughs> and Bean bag, and okay. something else. Oh, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I must mm. have played the wrong bits of music. I, I I try to be a bit careful at that. Um, so there we are. I'm I'm not quite up to speed this morning because I've not had my third cup of tea yet. Oh, three cups. Of tea. Oh, I've had to knock that on the edge. Yeah, because oh. I went to, I went to the doctor this week. I'm getting just occasional little touch in my heart area. Just a little. I can't even explain it. Just a little flat. No, I've, I've got the same. What, what, what is it? Uh, too much tea. Oh. Okay, try this. Well, it might be completely different for you. You might be bad, but I have a heart attack here. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in my case, too much caffeine can do it. Um, yeah. How long have you had this? Every so often I get a little pulse. And, That's uh, right, it's... yes. It's, it, and it's very, very light. You've... Oh, what was that? It's not It's not like a heavy thing or anything sharp or anything like... It's like someone has very, 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 very gently just touched. Yeah, probably. And I do That's like it. being touched now and again, John. I do like That's a bit it. of touching. Yeah, well, I like being touched, but not prodded in, yeah. the, in the heart area. No. That's exactly how it feels. Well, so that's what he said. Uh, just try it yourself. Uh, ha does it happen sort of every two or three days, would you say? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is this is really strange. That's exactly how, how often right. it is. OK. Completely cut out all caffeine. I'm pouring it down the sink now. Right. Go and get there some decaffeinated tea. Yeah. Um, you will have to find the brand that you like. PG Chips, it will taste slightly different. Yeah. Okay, and just try that for, for 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 a few days. Yeah. Give it a week to start working and see if that sorts it out. Okay, I'll, I will do no that, caffeine. Chris. I actually will do no, that. You no know, Doctor Chris. No coffee, no tea. Certainly not none of those nasty fizzy drinks uh, with full of acid and everything like that. Just tea and and water, or you can decaffeinate a coffee is the same thing as well. Um, yeah. In my case, it was the caffeine. Yeah. Okay. Well, the last time I had a Coke then, was at uh, once, 1985. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, once once, once you've been going for a while, if it sorts it out, then, then just carry on the decaffeinated for a while. And then after, I would say, six weeks, yeah. then if you want a cup now and again, it's, it, uh, it's it'll be all right. Yeah. I have a normal one in the morning and maybe yeah. one at night at work. And then that's it. The rest of them are all decaffeinated. And I'll be drinking, I've had my normal one today, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll have about seven large mugs of tea a day, of which only two will be like normal tea now. 
Okay, I'll take that on. And I quite like the Twinings one. You know, the Twinings in English breakfast. Absolutely. And you don't get Absolutely. much. Don't get much stronger than that, to be honest. <laughs> mm. I, I, when I switched on, uh, Chris, eventually, I heard the first thing I heard was the Engelberg Humperdinck. Oh yes. Well, um, it just reminds me I was at King's Cross Station wearing my uh, my Panama hat. Now, get me. I don't look like Engelbert Humperdinck at all because he's got like curly hair and a sort of beardy thing, hasn't he? He's a big bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm small. I'm five foot uh, eight. I'm knee high to a pixie. Oh, same but, size as me. Same as uh, me. Yeah. This guy comes up and goes Engelbert Humperdinck and gets me to sign a, a football program and then runs off. <laughs> And then the other day, I, I got these people shouting out the window, oh, what's the chap's name, the lead singer of Wet, Wet, Wet? Oh. Oh. oh um... Perry, Perry. Um, b -b -b -b. It's not Perry, is it? Perry, Perry. Anyway, they're shouting his name and pointing yeah. at me, and then they drove off. And <laughs> it's happening on a regular basis that people mistake me for someone who totally doesn't look like the person <laughs> that I'm supposed to be. Well, I get Christopher Eccleston. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And Vinnie Jones. You've got to say fantastic in Ma a northern accent. Marty Pello. Marty Pello. Marty wet, wet, wet. Pello, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Perry someone. That's it, Perry. You're getting mixed up with Pello, aren't you? Pello, probably, yeah. no? I, I, think, I think it's a new craze amongst the youth of, youth of today what? that they uh, point at you and, um, and then say something really wacky and then run <laughs> off. Because that's bound to confuse people. Hmm. <laughs> I think you're right. It's a lovely picture of an owl as your as your profile picture on Skype, I must say. Oh, that's a very very rare owl. It's a um, it's a tufted tufted small owl, from, it and it's only just been discovered in the Amazon jungle. A rediscovered. They thought it was lost. Could you just send me that picture somehow? I can't. I certainly I can't will do. That. I'll send you the big version. And the story about this is they were looking for something completely different, these ornithologists. Yes. And they came across that, and it just looked back at them in that particular quizzical manner that <laughs> they, the owl they does. They do owls, don't they? We love them. There's one lo that, mm. there's one they were outside we last night. Yeah, there's one round here. There's one round here. We often hear it at night. Mm. What does it sound like? Doo doo. Ah, ah. <laughs> you, you know what that is, uh, what, what Chris? What is it, then? What? The male is the one that goes to it, and the woman goes to it. The female one goes to it. Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> now, the reason behind that is, is that the twit means where are you, yeah, and the twit means here I am. Here I am. Here I am. <laughs> I got some, uh, loads of squirrels around here. You know the squirrel story, don't you, from a couple of years ago? <clears throat> no. Oh, no. that was dreadful. I had squirrels in the loft here. Oh, absolute gosh. nightmare getting rid of them. Absolute nightmare it was. Um, that's two years ago now, and they haven't come back again. Mind you, I've blocked up all the owls. That's why they can't get back in, dear. Oh, the pigeons have evicted oh, the squirrels awful. here. Awful. Awful. You never it, want it squirrels is. up there. It makes such a horrible racket in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Like a... <laughs> type of noise. Yeah. Yeah, the way they're chewing, aren't they? Chewing bits of wood and things like that. Well, they're a mem member of the genus Rodentia, which Horrible. is, and Rodentia is Latin for to chew or Horrible. to gnaw. Horrible. Sorry, I'm turning it into a science program. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, I had my afternoon sleep, was it uh, day before yesterday? Got up, I come out of the bedroom to turn right. And thought, What's that noise? I had a flapping noise. A magpie has got in the house and it's going up and down the window. Hey. And there's bird <laughs> crap everywhere all over my carpet, oh, dear. Oh, oh, no, no. Yep, I had to get a bit of bleach out because that's really dangerous, isn't it, bird poo? It's Every horrible. Day. It's horrible. I, 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 I stored my things in the attic when I was in Holland and yeah. when, all my stuff, my collection of swords, my guitars, everything went in the attic. Swords? And I had to work. Swords. Oh, yes. I, I, oh I've got swords. I, I used to do, before I had my, my, my knee gave out on me, I used to do uh, uh, Renaissance sword play. Did you do the sword when you throw, when someone's against a wall and you throw them? And they, they're no. like star shaped against the wall, and you throw the Look, swords at them, and you have to get them all around them. Did you ever do that blindfolded? I wanted to, as I really do, against my 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 sword master teacher, because he was a very strict, uh, very strict man. Yeah. If you did anything wrong, you got a slap. Oh really? <laughs> but the thing about knives and that is, you must never throw them because once you've thrown them, you don't have it in your hand anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got it. They've caught it, and they've thrown they've it. They've got the knife. They've got the knife. Let me tell you about this magpie. So I thought, oh, 
you know, it didn't bother me at all. You know, it was just going up and down the window. Poor thing couldn't get out. So yeah. I thought, well, how am I going to catch that? You know, because you can't catch it. So I waited until it was at a lower level and then just got a tail and chucked it over the poor bird, picked it up mm-hmm. carefully, and his little, pu- his little head popped out of the towel. But it didn't seem per- perceived by me at all. You know, it didn't, no. didn't like attack me or try and peck me or anything like that. And I, I, I feel that it knew I was trying to help it, so I just took it outside, uh, opened the tower, and off it went. Off it flew, flew away. They're a very clever bird. They're a member of the crow family, of course, and uh, they've got a hierarchy here. The crow outside will attack the magpie, but the magpie will fight back. But right. the poor old jay, the poor old jay gets not doesn't get a look in. Oh well, that's the way it goes. Sorry, Ooh. jay. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old thing. I was. I'm a bit. A bit. Still a bit on edge last night. I was up till two o'clock in the morning, uh, Chris. Doing what? Watching what I thought was a wonderful film. Yes. Uh, you might disagree. Uh, John Carter on Mars. Don't think it, I've seen that. It's the. Ed- I hadn't seen it. I hadn't heard of it. And I'm a science fiction buff. I love my Star Trek. Yeah. But I was up till uh, two, uh, and I just had this thing on the hard drive, and, and it's Ed- Edgar Rice Burroughs. You know, the guitarist guy. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's about a man who gets transported from America 1882 to Mars and has all kinds of adventures. Is it an old film then? No, no, it's almost brand new, but it's got par- It's absolutely got panned on the... Is it uh, good? It, it's, it's a good action adventure for even children that'll enjoy it. OK, what's it called? It's called John Carter on Mars. John Carter on Mars. It's a rubbish um, title. I saw... There's... Yeah, go on. Mm. Well, it's a rubbish title with lots of great costumes, lots of good sword fights, and straight, uh, lots of comedy as well. I like comedy in film. That's why I like the new Star Trek. There's a lot of comedy and, and humour, and, and even James Bond has got that back again. Um, I saw a little thing on the Star Trek films uh, this week, actually, somewhere, which said uh, they're going to start filming the next film next year, and it will, be, it will come a lot quicker than this one did. Because they were a bloody long time doing this one, weren't they? Yeah. They, they were really but long time doing this one. The next one should come quicker. So good. Wasn't Benedict Cumberbatch brilliant and oh, yeah. evil? Yeah, yeah, really good. The whole thing. You... They've got the characters down to a T. I've said that before. You know, they've done really well on those. Uh, on, on getting the, the old characters. Yeah, with <laughs> and new the actors, so to speak. They must have spent ages uh, trying to get that right. I reckon. I, I agree. The Kirk Spock interaction is hilarious really and, good, and, and very very close. Yeah. Really, very good indeed. And it's glorious in 3D as well. If you've not seen it in 3D, I, I have have urge people 3D. to see the 3D. I have seen it in 3D, thank you very much. Uh, talking of 3D, I know you're a bit of a technological person. Um, mm-hmm. And I... When, when they started pushing these 3D tellies, I was yeah. very, very sceptical. I thought, this is just not going to take off, I'm sure. And they would spend, they've spent millions... Sony and everyone else pushing these 3D tellies. And mm-hmm. I, I and my mates said, oh, I've got to get a 3D. I said, I wouldn't bother. This is not going to last. I said, they've tried it before, and it, 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 it's, it, it's not. You know, it works at the cinema. And I have seen a 3D telly in a shop. I've sat there in the chair, put the glasses on, and yes, it's good. It gives yeah. depth to the picture. But I was sure these weren't taken off. Well, last week uh, we heard the news that the BBC has now dropped all its 3D plans. The last 3D programme they're making is the Doctor Who special, which is probably made now anyway. I think it's made now. They're not carrying on. That's, That's surprising. That's surprising yeah. because um, 3D games is, are also coming out very big. In fact, okay. games is, uh, is one of the fastest growing industries to, to convert the games into the 3D uh, aspect. And um, I worked for a company in Holland that were producing the screens for this kind of technology. And they are pouring not millions, but billions in some cases yeah. across the globe into this technology, Chris. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know they are. But I, I was pretty convinced this wasn't going to happen. And, and uh, now the BBC have dropped their plans. They're, they're, well, I think they if, have if, to probably cut back, don't they? I mean, they get oh, the, no, the no, licence no. fee. Well... When when they when they believe in something, they keep going. Look at the free view thing, hugely successful since they took it over. That they are quite good at bringing forward technical things, but they've tried it and they think the take up has just not happened. You know, not enough people have bought these sets. Right. I don't yeah, think because they're, don't they're, think, they're so expensive. Yeah, I don't think there's a million. Well, I mean, I've seen three D thirty two inch tellies for about three hundred and fifty quid now, but. 
there, there's, there, it's, it's a bit of a you know chicken and egg, isn't it? You know, there's not enough programs on there to do it. And I think yeah, yeah, it's a bit like the laser you're not disc. Buy I a set. Yeah, you're not going to buy a set until there's loads of programs to watch, and they're not going to buy lots of programs, make lots of programs until there's enough sets, mate, uh, yeah. in people's yeah. houses. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I think it might be the same as the old DAB radio thing, you know. We're still waiting. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's still not really happened. I've had a DB radio in the car, um, you know, like a, a portable, not a car radio. I've just taken one in the car. And, you know, quite frankly, the signal is not as good. It doesn't go as far. Yeah, it cuts out. I, I go into town oh, uh, on the bus. I get halfway there and, and um, the, the show. I've been listening to Talk Sport and it, it'll die. That's right, yeah, yeah. I'm sick to death of them telling us how good it is when it damn well isn't. Yeah, um, LBC, I love LBC. Most yeah. of them. There's a couple of people I can't stand on there. Um, Christo, <laughs> Christo and Ian Dale. He has the, oh, yeah. bloody hell. He has the most boring voice you've ever heard. And he's got this four-hour show Monday to Friday. Presumably someone must like him. The ratings must be good for him, OK? Oh, but for be, me, oh Westminster will be listening to him. For me... Personally, he has the most boring voice you've ever heard. Steve Allen, oh my God, there's my God. Steve Allen, absolutely are you, are you, my God. Are you a member of his Crumblies uh, forum, the secret one? Oh, no, I don't know anything about that. Tell me more. Oh, How oh, do I get onto was, that? If you subscribe to LBC and download their podcast like I do and James Bates does as well, uh, you automatically get right, a lifetime yeah. subscription to the LBC Facebook. I can't get rid of it. It's, it just stays there forever. But there's a secret society. I mean, the Facebook page, top page talks about LBC and it says, Steve Allen is God. Christo, how rubbish was he last night? Oh, they, um, they, they, so they agree with me then. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, for the most part, it's oh, about it's, 99%. It's just dreadful. Oh, eh, eh, Christo. <laughs> and he goes on. The best one with the Christo thing, because Steve's always had a lot of listeners. And recently, Christo has been saying how wonderful and how, how many more listeners are listening to him. Well, the only reason for that is they, that they got rid of all those off BBC London. They had a lot, yes. of, they had a lot of people that, um, what's her name, uh, the Asian girl. Can you remember her name? She oh, was really yeah. good. Um, there was Kath, yeah. Caroline Faraday. I liked yeah. her. Yeah. There was, an, there was a, I think, an Asian guy can't remember his name and there was an asian girl but she you would never know she was asian she she just sounded english well she was english i beg your pardon that's incorrect of me that's her skin she, color was kind of asian appearance okay she's not moved over into uh, radio 4's uh, today program has she they've, just, they've brought the first ever ethnic uh, no, lady on to no, uh, radio no, 4 she sounds great but anyway her, her baby baby something baby baby that was her uh, name baby Beatty, 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 come on. Caroline Beatty, Caroline Beatty. I've, not, I've Beatty. not had two cups of tea now, so... <laughs> Merlin will know. Merlin, Merlin, who was the, um, who was the girl on um, BBC <coughs> London? Uh, and she was of Asian descent. That's, that's the correct thing to say, Asian descent. She was, <coughs> something Beatty. Nikki Beatty, that's it, Nikki Beatty. She was really good, really good on there. And, of course, they got rid of him. That's why he's got more listeners, because there's no competition anymore. We don't also, all want, we don't all there'll want be uh, summer, summer at the hot temperatures make people insomniacs, so they switch the radio on. Yeah, yeah that, that's why. So, as him, can't stand Christo, can't stand... Um, uh, the worst one for me is Ian Dow. I just cannot, I don't listen. Don't listen to him, can't bear his voice. Um, it, it's not, not called a graveyard shift for nothing, is yeah, it, with no, Christo? no. Not keen on Petri. I don't like her. Don't like her. I will she listen ruins my Sunday. Yep, she ruins yep. my Sunday. I love Steve Allen, Clive Ball. Oh, well, I mean, what can you say? How can yes. you not like Clive Ball? Fantastic. Anthony, someone or other, Anthony Davis, uh, Daniels uh, Davis, uh, Davis. Anthony Davis, hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> Who's the one with a really dry sense of humour? Very Nick Abbott, the God. Nick oh. Abbott. Oh, Dryness. God. Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I loved it when he was with uh, Carol McGiffin. I mean, she, she's really got to let herself go, hasn't she, on Loose Women? She, not, she no, really is oh, loose I now. I can't stand it. How can you sit there and watch four or five women cackling for an hour it's every horrible. day? It is Does an vibrate. awful programme. I've only ever seen, really, the episode yeah. where... Siobhan Fahey from uh, Shakespeare's Sister went on and she was 50 and she looked 30 and Carol McGiffin's 40 
and she looks 80. She looks like Davros. Yeah. And Stavros, uh, they were saying, Stavros yeah, sorry. in Doctor Who, Davros. <laughs> yes, come along, Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so well, who are we going to get for another Doctor, do you think? Is it going to be... A, is it all sorted out yet? Do you know I'd really like to see play that Doctor, the boy who played Merlin? Colin... 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 Someone. You're not good with names this morning, are no, we? No, I'm not. Colin... I know who you Irish mean. It's the, the new, you mean the new Merlin uh, sort of side series? Well, it's finished now, isn't it? They've done, yeah. they've done the five series. I don't, I don't know what he's doing now. Um... Uh, by the way, Merlin, who's listening this morning, he says, I watched Wimbledon in 3D uh, with the BBC. He said it was rubbish. <laughs> so, I mean, well, that, that's his opinion. I don't know. I can't comment because I never saw it. But if, he's, if Merlin says it's rubbish, then it must have been. Um, she, he, he reckons it's overpriced, not good value. Nikki Burden. Now, I think it was Nikki Bady. I'm sure it was Nikki Bady. And she was mm -hmm. on the BBC London. She was very, very good. I think they've missed out the BBC on uh, on one person who could have done it, but he may be getting a bit old, and that's Bill Nighy to be the Doctor, because he's just so ephemeral, the way he talks and, and yeah. waves his arms around. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wave my arms around as well most of the time. <laughs> I think you've got a slot there, but people, like you, you know, they're going to Could I be a good Doctor? You. I, do get, I do get confused with Christopher Eccleston, you know? When you get confused with Vinnie Jones, do people take a step backwards just in case you're a bit handy? I think they do, actually. I, <laughs> I, I see them. They, they, they cross over the road and start walking on the other side of the road. <laughs> and I, I, do get, I do get Ozzy Osbourne chants at me, but then I do wear a, a small pair of purple, um, lens, uh, purple spectacles. Oh, spectacles. And I've got the long right. hair. <laughs> well, I can't do the Birmingham accent. Well, try harder. <laughs> I can't, I'm rubbish, I can't do accents. I can't do my own accent. Oh, well. Mm. The other film I saw, Chris, last night, I was I was on a bender, film bender, was Flight Plan with Jodie Foster. Or, Flight. Have you seen that? Flight what? Flight Plan. No, no. Now, I, I don't know. When there's a woman as a male, as a male, as a main role in a film, yes. I sort of, I sort of, I'm not as interested, but I found that to be one of the most spectacular pieces of suspense, the thriller, take it as you will, yeah. that I've ever seen. I'm not going to, it's about a woman who uh, has a daughter, or does she, gets on an aircraft to go back to America, and the daughter, or whatever, disappears, and right. she's convinced that she's lost her daughter. I'm not going to say any more than that because I don't want to spoil it. Don't but tell me any more. What's this one called? Let me write that down as well. Flight Plan. Flight Plan. Flight Plan. I did watch a, a flight film that had been out recently. I can't think what it was. There was a black actor. What's his name? Uh, not one with the snakes on the plane. No. <laughs> Load of old rubbish that is. No. Um, I can't even remember. What Denzel Washington. Was. Denzel Washington. That's it. Oh, what a great actor. Mm. What a great actor. Anyway, I better go because I'm running out of time. It's twelve o'clock. Okay. Um, yes. I turn into a pumpkin soon. Uh, no, I will because I've got to get down the hospital, and I to get my feet sorted. Good Just before you go, um, yeah. Colin Morgan. Merlin says it was Colin Morgan who played Ooh. Merlin. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Great! What a fantastic actor he is. He He'd really be a good is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the blonde guy couldn't do it. He's just a bit too. He, he, for me, that character wouldn't work. Who, who, the, one, the one who played King Arthur, he couldn't be Doctor. No, no he's, he's a two feet, no. He's a bit too pretty boy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Colin could do it, though. Nice, nice to talk one, to you, Jack. Yeah, OK, Cyber John. Got there in the end. Have fun. Have a lovely day. Goodbye, Holland. <laughs> Better luck this year in the new revision as well. <laughs> or next year, rather. There we are. OK, one more email to do, boys and girls. Um, uh, from the lovely Marge. Don't forget, you can send in an email. Be wonderful to receive an email from you, especially if you're watching a recording of this program. Plus, we've got some new people who've joined us from America. You might have seen a little advert on Facebook advertising this show. If you are new, let us know where you are and what you do. Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Marge says, hi, Chris. Yes, I'm alive. Just watching your show at the moment and commenting as I listen. You ask, oh, yes, that's, that's another thing, boys and girls. Um, don't forget, you can just listen to the show. You can download an audio podcast. You don't have to watch. 
Yeah, it's not not all about visual. It's more about the audio. If you want to download the shows, there's quite a few hundred of them now, then simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and you'll see the instructions at the top there. You can also subscribe on iTunes. Again, type in United Kingdom Talk, Talk, <laughs> United Kingdom Talk, and you'll see the option to either um, subscribe to the audio podcast or the video podcast. Okay, once again, United Kingdom Talk uk and type in uh, United Kingdom Talk if you want iTunes, all right? Um, you ask what we were doing when we watched a show. Well, right now, I'm sitting... And where's my glasses gone? I'm sitting in my skivvies, eating a sugar-free oatmeal cookie and a cup of milk, relaxing and listening to the show. Glad you got a good bargain on your glasses. Yes, I got £50 off, because I had a load of assle. Hang on, why have these got all... Where are those finger marks have come from on those? Just a second. Or have I picked up a different pair? I've picked up a different pair of glasses here, haven't I? Oh. What are you doing, Chris? Oh, there they are. That's them. Yeah. Got the wrong... Well, where have I put those? Oh, there they are in front of me. I thought they were a bit... Yeah, because I had my eyes retested. The shape of your eyes changes over a period of time, you see. That's better. Uh, yes, I got £50 off because it because they weren't ready on time, you see. We have a group here at the Lion's Den that gives out vouchers for $20 eye exams, which isn't as cheap as the fiver that you said. Yes, I got mine done for £5, which is about $10. But you said, uh, the thing is, you get your glasses as well with that price. No, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. I, I had to pay for the glasses separately. It was £5 for the eye test... Oh, I see what you mean. Your $20 eye exam you get the glasses for as well, do you? Oh, that's very good. Very good value. I missed the last handout, but hopefully I'll catch it next time around. I think they do it twice a year. I need to get some glasses because when I drive now, I tend to have blurred vision about 100 yards in front of me. Yeah, that's what exactly what I was getting, Marge. Blurred vision in front of me. I want to be able to see things I'm going to run over ahead of time. <laughs> I want to be able to see the things that I'm going to run over ahead of time. Oh, I want to. Don't you swerve. Oh, you can't run over little uh, rabbits and things like that, Marge. I am disappointed with you, dear. I also have a bit of a problem reading the newspaper. I must read the comic section first thing in the morning or my day is ruined. Oh, no, I don't, I don't do comics anymore. I used to read uh, The Dandy and all those ones and things like that. I want yellow cut lenses, coloured glasses, if I have prescription ones, because that's just what I use when I drive my Honda Rebel motorcycle. It helps to brighten up the day, and I can see actually much better. Notice I typed coloured so you can read my writing better. Well, I only print out in black and white, though, Marge. We can't afford colour ink, dear. Dreadful. We can't afford coloured ink. Um, it helps to brighten up my day. Uh, I wonder, on the buy one, get one free, I like the idea of just getting the free ones and going back later and paying for the other ones. <laughs> I would be good for it, but they don't seem to see it that way. <laughs> I like that. Buy one, get one free. Can I just have the free ones, please? <laughs> you gave me a great idea. Own more than one of every item you need. Maybe even three or four. Like my keys... Glasses, whatever I always forget to take when I go to work and I just leave them in the van. You have so many handy ideas. Thank you, Marge. That's what we all need. Three of three of everything. Three cars, three houses, three gardens, three wives, three husbands. You like the idea of all that? Did you have headlights and lights on the back of your bike? I would be scared to drive at night. No, I don't. Uh, I do have a light. I do have lights on the back, but I don't cycle at night. I have a bright white light actually on the back, which I use if it's a bit dim during the daytime. And the reason I have that is because um, I did see someone with it once, and they had just bright white flashing light on the back, and it really made the bike stand out during the daytime. You wouldn't think you would notice it at day, but you did. So I have that as well now. You see. I saw a bike at a garage sale the other day, which was fairly new, but in the style from the early 60s. It reminded me of a Pee Wee Herman's bike. 
They wanted $100 for it, but I decided not to get it because I want a three-speed. I tend to get so tired on the single seed speed bike, but it was so tempting to get it because of the white wall tyres and large pink frame and body style. Oh no, you want a bike with gears, Marge? I've got I think I've 15, I think I've got 18 gears on my bike. And it makes a huge difference. You must have gears on your bike, darling. You were talking about a turkey not on video. I actually had a pet turkey that I had found walking along on a rural road out in the middle of nowhere. I think it was either dumped or gotten out of someone's pen. I thought I didn't really need this hen turkey and she was huge. I fixed her up in a pen and each day she would make the cutest sound cackle as I came home from work. She loved to cuddle. Oh, we love to cuddle animals, don't we? My cat Katie, she likes to be stroked. Cats don't really like to be squeezed, do they? We don't like to have a little squeeze now and again. Wouldn't you? But she doesn't like that. Like, you know, you pick it up, give it a little squeeze. She doesn't like that. No. She, she'd be picked up and stroked, though. She will be. She would actually wrap her, up her neck around your neck and just push very friendly and loving hen. She also, however, mad messes huge as a cow pat. So the upkeep was a lot of work. I liked her, but staying in the small pen alone, I felt guilty, so I gave her to a friend who had a flock of turkeys they didn't use to eat, but instead for eggs. She got a good home. Do you, do you have turkey eat turkey eggs? I've never heard of that, eating turkey eggs. We have chicken eggs, but not turkey eggs. Do you have avocados here in the UK? Yes, I do. Don't, don't really have them, though. I don't eat them. I laughed at what the word meant in the place it came from. Just look it up sometimes if you want, because I can tell you're on a family-friendly show. I shall make a little note of that. Look up avocados. Um, the translation is funny from its original meaning. I love them, but if I eat more than two, they make my stomach ache. I found that I love to drink smoothies in the morning for breakfast. Oh, full of sugar, dear. You mustn't put too much fruit in them, no smoothies. I used raw spinach, green tea, lemon juice and kale and put it in a blender and blend it until it's frothy and smooth. Oh, I suppose that's all right. You haven't exactly got loads of fruit juice in there, does you? It looks like crap, all green and like when a cow eats too much grass and has the runs. <laughs> God's sake, Marge. Oh, I'm feeling ill now. <laughs> but it's good <clears throat> and it gives me energy. Yeah, I was talking about someone who was on a, a juice diet last week, weren't we? Some television programme where this bloke was on a juice diet and lost loads of weight. Would it be OK if I got one of your photos and take it to a T-shirt place that does photo impressions on shirts? I want to make one that has your face and under it the United Kingdom Talk website and such. Be like a walking advertisement. I just thought it would be fun to make. They aren't expensive. But I wanted to ask you first. You know I'm one of your biggest fans. Thank you, Marge. Yeah, of course you can. Take any of the photos at all. I had, um... I've lost a... Where's that gone there? The wire underneath me there. I'm tripping over. Let me just kick that. <laughs> it's full of wires underneath here, you know. Underneath this, underneath this desk. Yes, yeah, so I had a, a recent picture made of my nephew kissing his little girl, his, uh, his baby daughter. I had that made into like a canvas photo and sent it round vet telling him and he was very pleased with that. My school dinners, I do remember once, we got what we called pigs in blankets. Pigs in blankets! Which was a hot dog uh, wrapped up in a biscuit, American kind of biscuit, and then baked. Not really good diets back then, no. No, pigs in blankets, uh, we had those, but they are sausages wrapped in a piece of bacon. Of course, I don't eat them myself, being vegetarian, but people do have them. I usually took my own lunch in a paper bag, and I actually enjoyed those. I would make a sandwich, an apple, and perhaps a fried pie. I do like apple fried pies from McDonald's. Oh, I love those. I haven't had one of those for a while. I drank milk or pop, not much of nutrition. Marge goes on to say... We were very poor, so we ate a lot of beans and cornbread, biscuits and gravy. Way too fattening kind of foods. But my mother really could cook. And her best item she called slum gullion, made from a hamburger meat, noodles, garlic, onions and whatever was in the fridge and did not move. We were glad just to have food to eat. Yeah, I think um, all mums are good cooks, aren't they? I miss my mum. I miss my mum and her cooking, of course. You were speaking of chocolate. 
Oh, you were speaking of chocolate last week. Normally, if I eat chocolate, I will get a migraine. Oh, you're not the only one. I've heard of that from quite a few people. But I found I can eat carob, which will give me diarrhoea. <laughs> Are we being a bit too graphical here, Marge? If I eat too much, but it's close to enjoying that taste. Chocolate, that say, helps women in their hormonal fluctuations. Food can be an aphrodisiac sometimes. Look how much chocolate they sell doing Valentine's Day. Oh, don't, you shouldn't buy all this stuff on Valentine's Day. Wait until it's over. Because all the prices go up, don't they? You look wonderful in glasses. Make you look very wise. Do you think so? Am I looking wise today in my glasses? I'm very wise. By the way, I've got to say hello to Matt Joplin, who's with us. He's in Croydon this morning. I did see his little name pop up there a second ago. Good morning, Matt. Nice to see you, dear. All right. Um, where are we going here? Just a second. Let's just take that off there now. There we are. That's that gone, right? On the subject of religion, I'm not a Christian and I'm not about human sacrificing. As you know, I do respect all paths and you're teaching me to respect them even more. Oh, yes, um, I, I, I respect all religions, whatever they are. You know, I go along with if that's what you do. Fine. Yeah, that's fine by me. You know, and why shouldn't it be? Long as no one's being hurt or anything like that. That's good. I feel the spirit comes to each in the way that they can connect to them. I'm always get touched when I see you talk about your mother. Or when something like Katie gets ill, my heart goes out to all you to uh, goes out to you over all the miles. I hate it when uh, when a cat's ill. I get quite upset. We all connected, no matter how many thousands of miles are between us, or even if we never meet in person. I would love to meet you in person and actually visualise what it would be like and what I would say. It's like how you would react when you think about meeting Barry Manilow. Well, yeah, I mean, I would love to meet him. I just don't know what I would say. I'd just fall apart, I think, because he's like, he's like up there. He, he's like... My superstar, Barry Manilow. Apparently there's going to be some Barry Manilow news very soon. And we're waiting to hear that. We don't know what that is. Could he be coming to the UK? Something like that, because he's got a new... He's got his musical as well, Harmony, happening, hasn't he? So I don't, we don't know what the Barry Manilow um, uh, news is. Since gaining too much weight, I would be self-conscious, even though I know you wouldn't really matter about that. No, it doesn't bother me what people look like. Don't care. I don't care what size you are. The only thing that worries me is when people are a bit overweight is their health. I start thinking, oh, what are you doing to your health, you know? Because um, actually my nephew uh, and his uh, wife are, are a bit overweight. And I do worry. I don't care what they look like. Of course I don't. They're my nephews, nephews and nieces. But it worries me about their health, that it will be affecting their health at some point, you know, in the, in the future. Because they're only young, you know, like 20, 20, 20 Eight, 28 is my nephew, I think. 20, well, blimey, 28. A nephew is 28, eh? I feel like I've met you after watching hours and hours and hours of your older videos. Watching you in the garden, I am there. And we'll do some more in the garden at some point. We'll do some in the garden. Not many people just sit and talk to each other or communicate, especially in media. You take me back to the 70s when we actually talk to each other, even though we do have to do it with this media format. Yeah, well, that's... That was the whole idea whenever I started this show those years ago. When it was just audio before the video came along. Um, I wanted to show the format where, say, you come into my house and we have a bit of a chat. I know it's me mainly doing the chat, but you know at any time you can either Skype or email or something like that. And it comes back to me and it involves, I like to involve people. And I like to give people a good time. I try to give people a good time. Sometimes we talk about stories that we don't like. Sometimes we disagree on things, but it doesn't matter. I like generally to give people a good time when I do my karaoke nights, when I do my DJing, when I do my quiz night. That's what I like to do. And that, that is what I do, do hopefully some of the time. You know, there are people, it has to be said, there are people that come out to these nights and 
I think in particular, it has to be said, the gay audience. If it's if it's a gay place that I'm working at. And it's almost like, you know, you, you do your DJing or whatever it is, and it's almost like they don't actually want you to entertain them. Just full of criticism. I don't know why that is. It doesn't seem to happen in the straight places at all. I don't know why. It's only the gay places, my own people... Where you look around, and, good evening everyone, and you look at the faces. I mean, you kind of wonder why you're even bothered to open your mouth. I, I don't know why that is. And, you know, if you're, not, if you're not receptive to what's going on, then you're not going to get right into it, are you? Do you know what I mean? It's difficult sometimes. Marge says, I have the day off on Friday next week. The 26th, so I won't need to go back to sleep and we'll be able to call in if you don't have someone already on. Yes, next Friday's call with me. End of July next week. God, where's it going, eh? Well, enough of this letter, just rambling and comments on what you said on Friday the 12th show. Anytime you can get me on the Facebook, just email me direct. I will try not to disappear unless I've run off a cliff someplace or something. Latest, my UK chat idol. Thank you, Marge. What a nice email that is, my darling. Very, very nice email indeed. Thank you for that, Marge. And uh, finally today, because we, we, I, I must get off now and get ready. I've got to have a shower before I go down to the hospital to get my feet sorted out. Uh, one more bit from James here, who says, did you ever get to watch the film with Michael Douglas in it about the piano player? No, not yet. He says it's a bit rude, but it was very good. As for 3D TV, um, TV was slow to take off, but it's everywhere now. What, you mean, oh, television as a whole? Well, yes, but I still don't think the whole 3D thing is going to take off. I really don't. It hasn't. And as I say, the BBC has pulled out from it now. I don't think it's going to take off. OK. Um, as for DLB radio, it relies heavily on the atmosphere. Does it? I can get BBC Three Counties radio and I'm nowhere near there. But when it gets cooler, I will lose the station on DAB. Does it really? I didn't know that. Is DAB affected by, by, by that? I didn't, I didn't even know that. Are you sure? Look that up, James, and send us an email. Don't do it on the Skype now because we're nearly out of time, OK? He said, isn't there talk of the next Doctor Who being female? Don't know how that's going to work out. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, not just female. Uh, the, the, you, I saw this article in, in the Express or something like that, and it was saying, oh, oh you know, we need a female doctor or you know it's it's the politically correct crew once again boys and girls oh, it needs to be a black doctor it needs to be a female doctor it needs to be gay it needs to be transgender tra and all this old crap get alive pc people please let's just have a doctor doesn't matter what color what sexuality what gender male or female it doesn't matter just give us the person who will be right. For, don't be trying clever and be politically correct. OK, because it's all crap. It's all crap, this political correctness. Just give us a doctor. We don't care who it is. You don't need to discuss whether it's going to be a female or whatever. Just give us a doctor. That's all we want. All right. Now, I've just remembered one more thing to do. Catalin, our violinist, who's in the States, regular viewer and correspondent to the programme has sent us in a little bit of her violin playing so I'm going to finish on this today boys and girls alright have a little listen to this this is from Catalin uh, in the USA have a listen to this it's beautiful <laughs>
How nice was that, eh? Catalin, the, the USA, uh, playing a little bit of music from me. It's actually him that is, uh, Soul of My Saviour, which is a, a, quite a popular hymn there. All right, boys and girls, uh, time for me to go. I'm sorry I have to keep looking across to the side here because I've just, just remembered I've forgotten something. Is that one there? That's the one there, I think. There we are. Let's just stop that. Oh, come on. Stop, stop, stop. How do I get that back there? Oh, not very good with all these little buttons. Time to go, boys and girls. Thanks so much for watching and uh, listening to the show today. Don't forget, uh, if you're watching a recording or listening to a recording of this live, uh, you can join us live every week on 10.30 on Friday mornings. Where do I find that? Simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Look at the very top there, and it will tell you where to find us on Friday mornings at 10.30. Okay? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. Thank you very much. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye now.